I have another $5 loco requiring the treatment. Oh, sounds painful. Hello YouTubes, welcome to another Tune Up Tuesday. This week, $5 loco I picked up from the Brantford Model Railway Club open house a couple of weeks ago. Same time I picked up my new bigger bridge. Now, it does actually run quite well, other than it's obviously got some broken gears inside. So today we're going to replace those gears because my new friend on YouTube, new subscriber Armand, sent me some parts that I might need. Thank you very much, Armand. So let's see what else we're going to be doing to this little beastie. Overall, not in terrible condition. Obviously, it's a bit dirty. Might need something a bit more than just a brush. Might actually need some soap and water. Windows are disgusting. But that's just, that's just dust. I can get rid of that. We're missing a horn. Glasses all there. Well, you know what I mean. The Oh, there's actually numbers on those n number boards. So if I can get bulbs behind that to light it up, that would be nice. A couple are missing at the front, but that's okay. That's It kind of looks a bit goofy to have a coupler at front of these F7s. And a coupler at the back is missing, but this has been damaged and re-glued and it's failed. So I do have a couple of... 3D printed coupler boxes. This is what they look like when you first print them and then you cut off this surround, you're left with that. Which will work just fine. And I also printed off a new horn, which looks like that. Which, uh, obviously, if that is glued in, I'll need to rip that out, possibly drill out what's left and replace it with this little guy, which looks to be the same type of horn as the silver one there. Yes. And yeah, it looks the same. So obviously that faces backwards. So let's get on with the work. Remove this shell. And get into the motor, which is pretty accessible. If I can figure out how to get it out first. I've got all these wires, but that's okay. They shouldn't get in the way too much. Okay, let me figure out how to get the... It looks like this comes off somehow because that has been... <laughs> that gap there has been butchered, if you can see that. Let me stick a screwdriver in there and see what happens. Hmm, don't like that. Okay, looks like I need to look this up and see how that comes apart before I completely destroy it. Okay, it looks like I really want to drop this motor down first to give me access and then unscrew these connectors to get to get the trucks away from the, the body itself. Anyway, there appears to be a little screw right there that I need to remove, which is holding on a little plastic tab, which is securing the thing into the body frame, the chassis frame. So that just fell out. This little guy. Let's not lose any parts. That goes with that. So that should drop down. Still a bit tight. It's getting caught up in those electrical connections. There we go. Okay, let's unscrew them. The reason I didn't do that when it was still inside is when I take these screws out, there's going to be 
brushes and springs that are going to want to run away. So let's get these out. The two red wires are facing to the middle, just so we know. So that's on record. Let's move that aside. So we have these two tabs and springs. We will, of course, clean them. Oh, the spring ran away. It's at the edge of the table. There we go. So inside, obviously, we've got the two brushes, which should just pop out. Lovely. Generally, if they pop out, then they're probably good. If they, if they don't come out easily, then they're probably wedged in with debris, but they appear to be okay. I'll give them a bit of a wipe before I put them back in. Right, let's have a look inside and see what the gears are like. If I can figure this out. Ah, right, okay. There's a tab there. That's holding it in, so we need to get a screwdriver in here. Leave it past that big tab. Wait a minute, I wonder if the other one's easier. They both look the same. Problem is, these old things are so old that they do get brittle and you risk breaking everything, you know. But hey, that's what super glue's for, right? And yes, I'm just being super careful. I wonder if I could push it down that way. Ugh, I think I just need to go for it. Stop being a wimp. Yeah, like so. Gears. Now, I have actually had this apart. So I was kind of I was kind of cheating there, and I cleaned it up and lubbed it. But that's when I realised that some of the gears were broken, and I told Armand, and he sent me my little my little bag of goodies. So let's see what he sent me. Hi Dave, hope this helps. Cheerio, Armand. Lifelike pancake, little bag of bits. He's actually sent me a couple of brushes as well. So we'll put them in the other container, just in case we need them. All come out. He's also sent me springs. Hmm. Okay, let's inspect these gears. Okay, these are actually, the wheels are held in with a bit of uh, pressure. The little slots are shaped so that they hold the axles in. So we shall inspect all the gears because he sent me a full set, so may as well use them all if I have to. Because I'm sure that the gears he sent me came from one unit, so they're all going to be matching. Let's try and keep this in some sort of order. Oh, that gear is rolling about on the or sliding about on its axle. Let's go with... Should have made another one of these containers. Anyway, I'll stick it in there for now. Just so I know which side was which. Hmm. Not sure how these gears come out.
I think I need to take this apart because these gears are sitting on little shafts which are moulded into the plastic. Yeah, I'm going to have to take these out. Looks like two screws. Yep. Which is fine. It gets us closer into the motor and we can see what condition the motor is. I don't know if these... Do these have a commutator? These pancake motors? I have no idea. But we're about to find out. And if it does, then we can clean that up as well while we're in there. Let's see if this comes apart now. Careful in case there's another spring in here. Oops, what was that that popped out the top? Something came out the top. I didn't see what it was. Oh, what on earth was that? You see that? I have no idea what that is. Hopefully I've not just destroyed the whole thing. Might have just been a bit of shrapnel that was lying about. Okay, so that gives us access to the gears. You know what, I'm just going to replace all the gears. Makes sense. Oh, interesting. There's a bit of... Uh, there's a bit of plastic in here. Which doesn't... Oh no, it's not. It's just... It's just grease. Or lubricant. Okay, let's take the motor out, or the coily bit. Ah, yeah, see, I really want to clean that section there. Makes sense while we're in here. The brass gear is obviously fine. It's going to shred plastic before it does anything to the brass. Right, I'm going to give this a clean with some IPA and then probably attack it with my little fiberglass pencil. And of course, Make sure there's nothing left in these grooves. Well, that's the unsharpest toothpick I've ever seen. Looks good. Let's check the inside of the casing. Give that a bit of a clean. It's not bad inside there. And seeing that, cotton buds are getting a bit dirty. No harm in cleaning it all. So, before we put that back in, I'm going to put a wee dab of a tiny little drip of oil in there. this back in. And put this to the side. We are done with this for... No, we're not, because we need this for the gears. Duh. Right, so... Does everyone remember what order they all came out of? Because I don't. So, the two middle ones were these ones. Which are... These ones, that's interesting because they look they look bigger. Which is possibly why <laughs> it was clicking quite so badly because the white ones, which are the ones that were in it, have maybe worn down. 
Yep, that makes sense. So, this one goes in there. Does it go that way or does it go that way? Ah, let's find out. Big one on top. Okay, so we have established that these go down the way, otherwise the gear won't mesh. This little gear here has to mesh with those two. Now it's turning. Now I'm just going to test fit all these for now because I do want to lube everything before it goes back together properly. So I do need to remove, let's see, what have I got left? I've got two, two gears left. I have to hope that the ones on the wheels are in good condition because otherwise I would need to take the wheels off to get access to those gears. That appears to be okay. That also appears to be okay, thank goodness. So we're gonna replace these two. Again, make sure these are the right, yeah. Oh, might have a problem. I don't think that's the right size for them. Which means it's possible that I've put the wrong ones on there. Yeah, that shaft is definitely too big for them. Let's see if I've done it wrong. Nope. Maybe it's just a really tight fit. And the reason I'm replacing it is because there's a crack right there. If you can see that. Ah, well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Let's get this shaft off. Try and ram the new one on. I may regret this decision. No, there's no way that's going on. So what I'll probably have to do is just drill these out a little bit. Let's just compare it to the one I removed. It's quite a big difference in the whole size there. Goodness, you'd think they would keep them all uniform, wouldn't you? Okay, let's do a bit of surgery on these gears. Didn't want to have to do this, but there you go. Just hope I've got the right size drill bit. Right, before I go too mad, let's just make sure these are the right size. Again, they look a little bit bigger, but it could be that it's just that the white ones are worn down. The inner cog looks the same. I will give it a go. So we just want to drill out a little bit bigger. This one looks good. That one also fits. That one's quite a bit bigger. Let's compare it to this shaft. Hmm. Needs to come out quite a bit. Well, could actually be that size that I require. I don't want to go too big because then it will just slide about on the shaft. But that does look like the size I require. Oh well, I'm going for this one. I just need to be gentle. Right, here we go.
one's fairly painless. Oh, that's actually quite a nice fit now. Awesome. If I had gone too small and rammed the shaft into the gear, it would have just cracked it like the other ones had been. So we didn't want that. Let's do the other one while we're here. It's quite a nice fit, actually. Hopefully I won't need to glue it. That's quite snug. Happy with that. Now I need to figure out which way around they were supposed to go. So, big one. One there. Facing down. Turns them. This feels a wee bit wobbly. Which is worrying. Once it's got some grease, it should be a little bit tighter. Right, let's try these. So this one will need to go... I really should have paid attention a bit more. So it can't go that way. Well, it could go that way. Could it go that way? Oh, I'm going to have to check the video, sorry. Back in a sec. Let's see, I think I need to put the cover back on, or the other half of this, to keep this rigid. So, I need to load these up then, with my usual petroleum jelly. Love it, right? it, it works for me. I know it would probably be easier to do it when it's all together, but at least this way I know I've not missed any bits. Go on there. Actually, before I do that, let's just put Dodd a tiny drip of oil. Right, now we can put the cover on. Give this a quick clean as well while we're here. Little squirt of oil, get this back on. Okay. So far so good. If these still spin. Yeah, we're still good. Can always add some more lubricant in there if I have to, but I don't want to soak it. Right, let's get these in now. So this has to go in that way. So the gear has to get moved up a bit more. Tiny bit more. Also, I'm not sure if I had it perfectly straight. No, I did not. So that needs to go down. A bit concerned when I drilled it, it didn't go straight, which is not ideal. Yeah, gear is not straight. Oh well, hopefully it doesn't matter too much. Hmm. This one needs to go up a little bit as well. Not happy with this gear. Hopefully I can just straighten it while it's on the shaft. Because I got that one straight just by pushing it at a different angle. But that one's quite bad off. Bad off. Badly off. Uh, it doesn't look too bad now actually. Okay. Uh, what's left? Wheels. Uh, 
Now, two of the wheels have got traction tyres, and two of them do not. But the weird thing is, I'm trying to figure out where it picks up the power from. I don't think it does pick up the power from here. I think it just picks up the power from the front bogey. So we'll clip these back in. Make sure it all still turns. It does. Add a bit more grease or Vaseline. Give it a spin. Put the cover back on and hopefully that will eliminate our clickety-clack noise. Unless of course that offset gear makes it even worse. Cool. Right. Cover on. Looks nice. So I'm going to wire this back up. Put the, the brushes back in, springs back in, and give it a test. Okay, let's see if it runs any better, or at all. Okay, wish me luck. Backwards. Which is wrong. I must have got these wires the wrong way around. What did I say, red to the front? Both reds are on the front. Why is it going backwards? Uh, doesn't matter. I'll sort that later. Ooh, much nicer. Need to run it in a little bit to circulate all the lubricants though. Happy with that, let's bring it back. Still hearing a little clicky noise, but that's probably from my stupid twisted gear thing. It's certainly a lot better than it was. This slow speed is work working quite nice for a lifelike as well. Not bad. Right, next. Right, I just checked my, my video and apparently the two red wires should have been on should have been on that side. When I said front, I obviously thought that was the front. <laughs> So, I need to swap those two wires about. Okay, next, I want to clean up the body. I want to add the horn and I want to add the coupler before I move on to the LEDs because I need to wait for the paint to dry on that. I need to wait for the glue to set on that before I start messing about with the LEDs. So let me give this a quick clean, give the horn a quick paint and get the coupler on.
don't you just love pancake motor springs? Yeah, so I swapped those two wires about, so we're back to where we were. I could have probably just rotated the the truck 180 degrees, but kind of wanted the wires to go where they were supposed to go for future reference, so I wasn't confused. So what's next? Well, LEDs. I'm going to do another coat of paint on that little horn, which is over there, because I'm going to put that on at the very end, because no doubt I'll put it upside down and break it off. But so far so good, and the... Coupler boxes attached. So hopefully that's at the right height. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm just going to use horn hooks for these. Uh, just because I doubt very much a KD is going to be any use on this. Especially if the height isn't perfect. Right, LED time. I'm going to wire the LEDs the same way I did on the last LED conversion video. So feel free to skip this part if you've not seen it before. Then pay attention. I should I should know what I'm doing this time. So I am going to go for one white LED there, one yellow LED for that side, one yellow LED for that side, and a red LED sticking out the back. Now I'm using four LEDs, they're all running different voltages. Combined, they run or require nine volts. My track runs at 12 volts so I need to use a resistor to take up the extra 3 volts which I've worked out to be around about a 150 ohm resistor and to connect it all I'm going to have it all kind of hardwired to the shell so to connect it to the right positive and negative on this I'll be using one of these plugs so one side obviously goes to the LED setup and one side goes to the positive and negative on the motor. And remember, LEDs like this only work in one direction, so I'm going to have them working forwards. So I need to check that before I wire this plug on to the motor. And I still haven't got like a bridge rectifier to overcome that little forward reverse lighting error problem. So this will do for now. Let's go. Step one then, let's lay out our LEDs. Now I did think about going for the slightly bigger, well much bigger, white LED, but I'm running this in the other loco and it's plenty bright enough. So he's going at the front with a little yellow one at either side and a little red one at the rear. So I need to connect these. It doesn't really matter where I put the resistor, which I've instantly lost. Oh, there it is. 150 ohm resistor. It doesn't really matter where in the circuit the 150 resistor goes. It can go at the start, it can go in between. And so it, it doesn't even matter which way around. All it's doing is slowing down the current from 12 to 9 volts so that these don't pop. Ask me how I know. No, don't, don't. Just trust me. And if you... If you're new to this, you'll see that the prongs in the back of the LED are different sizes. Longer one is generally the positive. There's all sorts of ways. Get a magnifying glass out, you can check the inside. But generally, the, the longer one's a positive, shorter one's a negative. So, in order to make this series circuit, I will be starting... Doesn't really matter where to start, but for talking's sake, let me get these in position. Ugh, done it the wrong way around. Hold on. Let's say we are coming from the positive of the the battery or the power. So it's going to go to one side of the resistor. The other side of the resistor is going to go to the positive, which is a longer one, longer prong in the LED. I'm going to connect that shorter one to the longer one of the white LED. Connect the shorter one of the white LED to the longer one of the yellow LED, LED, and then run a wire from the shorter one, the negative prong, all the way down to the longer positive of the red LED. And then the shorter or negative side of this red LED goes to the negative on the power supply, which will be the black. So the red will go to there, 
join, 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 all the way back down. Black goes to there. Got it? Let's go. Let's do a quick test on the track before we continue and finish wiring it up to the local. Doesn't matter which way round we go on the track for now. The most important thing is we get it right when we wire it to the locomotive. All right, let's see what we've got. Nothing, which means switch it to forward and we have lights. Red. White, yellow, yellow. They're actually quite orangey, but that's okay. It adds to the vintage. Okay, let's stick all this inside the local shell. I'm going to hot glue gun this in place. This could get messy. Let's put a wee squidge on the glass. First, right, you squidge there. Let's get the, the white one on first, like that, set. Oh dear, I've got glue here. It's going to need more than that. That's splodged on. Ugh. It's a bit of a mess. Don't worry, no one will see it. Oh, it's not liking this at all. As soon as I let go of this wire, it's going to move. Yeah, I went a wee bit crazy with the glue. Ugh, let's get the yellow one on. I'll peel off all the excess glue later. See, the other yellow one is sticking way, way in the wrong direction. Let's see if I can bend it in a bit. Ah, that'll do. Let's glue it in there. What a mess. Yeah, I didn't say it was going to be pretty in here. But hopefully, no one will ever see it. Oh, I just keep making more spaghetti. Come on. What's going on? It's like a spider's web. It's never ending. Right. Let me wait for that to cool down and we will get the red light stuck in the back somewhere. Okay, so this wire has to run along here. Uh, I do have plenty of room, as in I've got loads of height, so I don't mind those wires hiding up there. Uh, I'm not going to stick you on. Yeah, I'll just stick it against that wall somewhere. As long as it's kind of sticking out that hole. I don't really want it sticking out the hole, to be fair. I just want it on the back of the hole. Hot glue gun has done its job. Ooh. 
Oop, I'm out that again. Right. Oh, let me hold it there for about 10 minutes. See in a minute. I mean 10. So I've removed the original incandescent bulb and wires. So I've only got two connections left to do. I've checked it this time properly. And I need to wire up this red wire to the forward connection, the black wire to the rear connection. Hopefully I get it this time so I can solder them on and it'll be fairly neat because I'll just have that wire, that plug, it'll go straight into the body. Okay, final assembly then. So what did I say? Red forward. It's such a bad memory. You know what? I'm going to trim the original wire back a bit, twist them together. Make life a bit easier. Bit of flux, bit of tinning. Let's them together. You know what, I'm just going to trim that. I don't like excess live wires floating about. Okay, black wire. I may as well do the same because you know it's just going to fall off as soon as I try and screw that. I'm going to have to resort to the tiny solder, which I'm not keen on. But hey, if it works. Trim that back. Solder it on. Okay, that's that done. Let's hope it all fits inside. To be fair, I've not actually got any more wires. I don't know, maybe a couple more, but I don't have all the wires going to the front. Plug you in there. Stuff you up there. Is it going to fit? It sounded a bit breaky, didn't it? The white wire poking up there. Up or down, white wire. You can't go in the middle. Got plenty of room to hide up there, you stupid wire. Right, let's try that again. I might use some zip ties or something, but then I need to hot glue the zip ties to something, otherwise they're just floating about, creating even more junk. Oh, I still see the wires, but I just want to get this on the track, make sure it's all working nice. Looks nice. So, final part. Let's find my little horn, get that glued on, and we'll be done. Hands are getting a bit shaky. I don't know if that's old age or excitement. Leave that for a few minutes and we'll be done. Excellent. Oh, 
I forgot to put the coupler on. Premature there. Right, I'll show you how that works. So these printed coupler boxes that I printed out, they're designed for either KD or horn hook with the bigger hole. So that will go over there. Slot in there. Fall out because it needs the the little cover. Now, I've not 3D printed these. These are metal because they've got to be kind of springy to hold it in. There's a couple of little lips at either side of the, the coupler box that hopefully this will just clip onto. If I can squeeze that in there. I don't want to put the loco down because I've just fitted the horn. Oh, it works. Not quite as springy as I would like. Actually, it's not bad. So, we are all done. Brand new-ish. Let's see if it works. This is quite exciting. I've not actually tested it with the body on. So, you'll know if it works when I know if it works. Let's find out. So far, so good. So the pancake motors are a little bit whiny. Always were. But it's not clicky anymore. What do the lights look like? Oh, smashing, I think. They really benefited from that clean. Let's see if the red light's working at the back. Yes, it is. Everything's working. That was funny. The lights looked as if they weren't working there, but it's just a digital camera thing. You can see they're working fine there. And I like how the top light is a bit brighter than the bottom light, even though it's only one bulb. Must be a weird frequency thing, because trust me, the lights are on all the time. Well, I think that looks excellent. But the question is, can it haul freight? And will the coupler box stay attached? Find out at the end. Thank you very much, Armand, for sending me those gears. It's helped immensely. And we've saved another junk loco from the junk box. You can sit up in my shelf next to the other CP, the big one. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next Tuesday. Bye for now. I don't know why I said bye for now like that. Just, I meant to wave. See ya.